Welcome you all. Today we are going to talk about what is morpheme. Our focus is on types of morphemes, which are divided into free morpheme and bound morpheme. Free and bound morphemes are further divided into two other categories. This is our lecture number three. We already have talked about the very basic information, our lecture on morphemes. This lecture is for the students of uh, linguistics part four, English go 206, the structure of English. So without a further go, let's uh, begin our today's topic. Here, I'm going to explain what is morpheme. It is the smallest meaningful unit in a language. A morpheme cannot be divided without altering its meaning. In a very easier words, we could say that morpheme is the smallest meaningful unit of language. For example, kind. Kind is actually a word as well as it is a morpheme. Or here is another example, unkindness. It, it is actually three morphemes. And the same kind, the negative prefix un, and the noun forming suffix n e double s. So this word unkindness, this is actually a word unkindness, but this word consists upon three morphemes, kind, un, and n e double s. Sometimes morphemes, as I already have defined in the definition, is the smallest meaningful unit. Sometimes these are actually the smallest functional words in language. Suppose uh, the uh, morpheme N E double S, it does not have any meaning, but it carries function here, a grammatical function in this uh, word unkindness. It makes this word a noun. Here we are going to talk about types of morphemes. Morphemes are divided into two types. Number one as free morphemes and number two as bound morpheme. Free morphemes are consist upon lexical morpheme, functional morpheme, and on the other hand, bound morphemes are divided into derivational morphemes and inflectional morphemes. So without a further go, let's talk about these all uh, types of morphemes one by one. Number one, Free morphemes, such morphemes that can stand by themselves as single words. It is also divided into two types. So free morphemes are divided into two, two types and uh, these are known as a single word. Lexical morphemes and number two, that is functional morphemes. Lexical morphemes are actually the open class morphemes are open class words. These morphemes are treated as an open class of words and some examples are as it is boy, man, house, tiger, open, etc. These open class words are these lexical morphemes actually are the base words which have meanings. On the other hand, when we say functional morphemes, they have only functions like and but because on near these words do not have meaning in english or in language they have grammatical functions so functional morphemes are a set consists of largely the functional words and the language such as conjunctions prepositions articles and pronouns here is another type of morpheme that is known as bound morphemes Bound morphemes cannot stand and uh, uh, the set of affixes, affixes mean to say prefixes, suffixes, which fall into the bound category. It is also uh, divided into two types. Now, bound morphemes cannot stand itself and these are divided into these two types. So let's begin again one by one uh, these all types. Derivational morphemes, these are used to make new words in the language and are often used to make uh, words of a different uh, grammatical category from the stem. And uh, these actually derivational morphemes uh, uh, are here, like prefixes. 
words, base words mean to say, and suffixes. So these are actually the derivational morphemes. They're prefixes uh, and uh, suffixes mostly because base words are also part of the free morphemes as well. So here prefixes is a letter or a group of letters joined at the beginning of a word to change its meaning and to make a new word. For example, un plus happy. So both they make the word unhappy, mean to say not happy, in plus justice. So they make the word injustice, mean to say not justice. So these are actually the part of the uh, morphemes which come before the best words are known as prefixes. Here are the other um, suffixes. Suffixes are also part of derivational morphemes. Can change the word class are parts of a speech and the meaning of the words. So when we are changing suffixes, they actually change the word class from noun into uh, verb or verb into noun or noun into adjective like the word is pollute is a verb and ION. So it becomes pollution, right? So is a noun. Our base words, base words are also uh, derivational morphemes in the sense that uh, most of the base words are the words are composed of suffixes and prefixes. For example, here, read, open, catch, etc. Other examples as criticism, criticism is a noun. Critic is a, again, noun or criticize the verb. So critic, I, I, Z, E, criticizes is a verb and critical is an adjective. So the best base word is critic. And when we are going to make ism, is a, and all, uh, they, these words may be divided into different class words. Here again, uh, another type that is known as inflectional morphemes. These are not used to produce new words in English language, but rather to indicate aspects of grammatical function of a word. Inflectional morphemes are used to show if a word is plural or singular, if it is a past tense or not, and uh, if it is comparative or possessive form. So inflectional morphemes, basically, uh, English has eight inflectional morphemes. Like all the inflectional um, parts which make noun like S, ES, and apostrophe S, and um, so these are and most of the verbs like verbs are uh, made up of esp ing ed and en so when we are going to make uh, for the forms of verbs these words are been aided and here a uh, are adjectives as well so we are making est er with uh, comparative and superlative adjectives so these are known as inflectional morphemes. Thanks for attention. Thank you very much. Hopefully this would have been very helping for all the students.